Hello and welcome everybody. It's another Monday and I'm going to attempt a masculine style one sheet wonder. So sorry this is a pre-recorded video, it's not a live, but uh, I hope we're going to have some fun anyway. So hello everyone who's watching uh, me uh, on the premiere. Thank you for coming in and wanted to use these little fungi. Uh, I recently did a class where somebody used them and I just thought they looked so cool. So I'm going to do a kind of masculine style um, stamping with you. And I'm going to design this one sheet wonder so that it can be cut into, um, oh, do I want to, I was going to say four sections, but actually now I'm looking at it, I think I might do it so that it can be cut into eight sections. So I'm going to be using Quiet Reflection to start off with. And this is a really beautiful, distinctive style stamp. And that means that it's just got lots and lots of detail to it and is a really beautiful way to stamp. OK, so I'm going to start off with roughly finding my halfway point um, on this grid paper which has just totally confused me because I've realized that it starts at <laughs> 12 and a half um, so 12 and a half plus um, 10 is 22 and a half plus half that's 23 there we go right <laughs> totally confusing myself there so what I wanted to have happen was for that main line to go through the middle of my cardstock not that it makes that huge a difference but i just wanted it to be roughly halfway oh so there we go i'm using crumb cake good old crumb cake great one to uh start off with because it's fairly pale and as you can see i'm twisting the image up and down or round and about rather turning it uh, 180 degrees because, yes, I know that I think this is meant to be a reflection, but it's all going to kind of get covered up. So it doesn't really matter uh, what it really looks like. And then um, what was the other thing? Oh, I wanted to, actually I did want a little bit of imagery from coming down the from the edge up here, um, just as a bit of texture, really. And yes, I know they're supposed to be trees, but. We're doing art, you know, art can be, you know, artistic interpretation here. It actually looks like little, sort of like a mangrove, you know, where you've got those lovely, what are they call those trees that have things hanging down from them. It kind of looks like that, really. I may add some other other leaves to it I've already got on my desk because I was filming last night this leaf from painted lavender this one here so I think I'm going to add a few more textures to this now before adding my fungi so I hope you guys have had a good weekend my parents-in-law got back from their trip and uh, Tom and I decided to hide 80 little ducks in their house because it was when they were away, it was my father-in-law's 80th birthday. And I just so happened to watch a video on Instagram of somebody doing the very same thing. They, they, they bought these tiny weeny little yellow ducks and hid them in, in someone's house. And so, I you could you ordered them in sort of hundreds but so we we ordered 100 and then we hid 80 of them around their house anyway I spoke to my mother-in-law yesterday and she said um, I said oh how many have you found she said we found 60 so far <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and they said um yeah we kind of walked past one and then we realized that we've missed one and <laughs> anyway I think they're finding it rather fun well I hope they are anyway so yeah, so because he had his 80th birthday um, away from us, uh, enjoying a nice little holiday, um, we made sure there was plenty of cake at the church meal yesterday. So he had, he ended up having sort of, I said he had three birthday cakes. One was more like a gâteau. It was a really soft, 
oh this, there's a lady in my church who makes the most amazing cakes and it was this beautiful soft sponge with whipped cream in layers with strawberries and then my other friend made a cake that we had straight after church with our tea and coffee and then i made a recipe that i had seen in a book in a book that i have it's an ottolenghi book and i think i've spoken about ottolenghi on here before saying what a fantastic you know they they come out with amazing beautiful books and so yeah i had a go at the i think they call it a celebration cake and it really is very celebratory i mean it feeds 25 people at least and it's got a few different steps to it but if i ever make it again i will probably make use of the fact that you can pre-freeze the cake so the cake is actually gluten free which is kind of helpful because sometimes you do need to have a gluten free recipe and it's basically you melt dark chocolate you then whip up um, egg yolk so you have to measure out about 400 or so grams was it 400 grams it was a lot it was about 12 or 13 egg yolks you you whip up the egg yolks with some sugar then you put your melted dark chocolate into that mixture then you whip up the egg white separately and then mix that into the mixture and that becomes your cake so your cake is basically chocolate eggs and sugar and it holds really well it's a really kind of dense chocolate cake but without flour so then you bake you take that mixture and you split it into three and bake that onto pans that are probably about this size actually just a little bit bigger and then once they're baked and cooled you actually freeze them so you layer layers of baking um, parchment between them and then you wrap cling film around it and you freeze it and you're meant to freeze it for 24 hours right i'm loving this can i just say love this <laughs> it's turning out really well now i'm looking at the lavender stamp again and i think i would like to stamp some of this however um i think i want to actually cut it in half before i do that but before i do that i'm going to stamp some of these wee flowers coming down from the top because i mean i'm getting lavinia stamps vibes here really this is a very kind of lavinia style card i think for those of you who don't know lavinia stamps it's a british company who make really beautiful whimsical usually lots of fairies and mushrooms and that kind of thing excuse me i got a cough <coughs> excuse me um anyway so back to the cake so you freeze these chocolate layers and as i said you can pre make that a few months in advance and just keep them in your freezer so when oh so then also this is still saturday baking this cake so the next thing to do was to melt the white chocolate and you just do that over a you know glass bowl over hot water oh no you don't sorry that's the way you melt the dark chocolate oh dear please nobody follow my instructions go and get the proper instructions um <laughs> uh, sorry you make a ganache so ganache to make a ganache it's really simple you break up all the white chocolate pieces then you oh got a bit of ink on there then you um melt sorry not melt uh heat up some cream double cream and then you have it sort of come just to the simmer and then you pour that cream over the top of the 
melted uh, sorry the broken not melted the broken white chocolate and you leave it for a few minutes you just let let the cream melt the white chocolate pieces i think i'm gonna just add a few more little hangy things here and you stir 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 until it turns into a gorgeous white chocolatey gloop uh, let that cool and then pop that in the fridge as well fridge so the, the ganache can actually be made a few days in advance and then you need some fresh fruit i mean you can tell probably can tell the enjoyment that i had kind of constructing this cake and also eating it i mean it was utterly divine so i'm sorry those of you who are not interested in cake you're, you're just going to have to hear all about my cake now or carry on hearing about my cake so this is the dotage going on now so i'm just going to add a little bit of dotage here yes yeah, so then when it came to assembling it i assembled it on the sunday morning i'd already pre-cut up some strawberries into thin slices and also did that thing where if you have a strawberry still with the green on it and slice down but not completely to the green you can kind of like splay them apart to make a really cool kind of little decorative thing so i did that had three of those and then um what did i do oh and then you take the ganache out the fridge put it into your whisking thing whatever you're going to use to whisk and then you mix in what was it 500 mils of double cream and you basically you keep whipping until it's just pouring and then you get your three cakes out the freezer put them on whatever it is that you are going to be presenting your cake on i'm just going to cut this in half now um then you basically layer layer the chocolate cake with the white chocolate and cream mixture and then layer also put make sure you put the strawberries and i, I put strawberries blueberries and raspberries in there oh actually I'm going to go in with a bit of pebbled path. Um, I, I, yeah, I want to use that for something. So I'm going back to the pecan pie because what I want to do is kind of a couple of layers of grass. But I want some in pecan pie and some in Knight of Navy. Yeah, so you layer it up. So you do your three layers. Chocolate cake, cream, fruit, chocolate cake, cream, fruit, chocolate cake, then the cream. Then the top layer, you kind of make it a bit more decorative. So I kind of copied the picture in the book where I just put a corner of fruit and a corner of fruit, sort of top left, bottom right. And I bought an eight, a couple of candles with eight and a zero. Uh, to pop on there and yeah just yeah that was it oh then sprinkled a bit of icing sugar over the top of the fruit just to make it look pretty and to cover my chopping board I ended up using one of my big wooden chopping boards uh, to carry it oh and then I put this cream stuff on and then I thought oh, I've got to get it to church like how on earth um, I can't cover it I can't anyway i think it actually did help that i had the weight of the chopping board because it is quite a heavy chopping board and i um i basically got into the car the front seat of the car and got tom to hand it to me and i held it all the way to church and it was fine no problem <clears throat> it worked and it was enjoyed by many and i have to say it was well worth the effort because it tasted amazing so I'm rather looking forward to eating the leftovers today. So I'm visiting a friend at the moment. And so I'm going to take a little piece for her as well. 
so that's why this is not alive tonight but i'm waving hello to everybody on the live thank you oh sorry the premiere thank you for coming and watching and commenting hope you're all having a jolly old time there oh there we go i like that now i didn't know whether to put some text onto this because there's that fab text stamp in here um or whether just to leave it or just to maybe do a bit of highlighting with a bit of what color is this su 500 let's see what that looks like oh that's sort of pecan pie-ish and i don't know whether oh let's see if i go un on the underneath of the fungi i don't think i can call these mushrooms i think they're more fungus than i mean i guess they could be mushrooms what's the difference well i suppose some things are toadstools aren't they so but they all come do mushrooms all fall under fungi mushrooms and toadstools there's an interesting program on netflix about the life or the world of fungi and people using its uh, their <laughs> hallucinogenic qualities um but no um sort of doing people are doing research into the med medicinal value of them rather than just the uh, recreational value i guess yeah i i don't want to detract too much from the beautiful imagery because the image itself is so beautifully designed I don't want to detract too much from that, but putting this extra little bit of colour, I think, helps just to make them stand out a little bit more. Yeah, so what else have I got to tell you? That, that's pretty much, that was my weekend. Um, and we chilled out. Oh, we did watch <laughs> last night. We finally got round to watching the Barbie movie. Mm. I do have thoughts, but um, not thoughts that I can probably express very co coherently about that film. We did think that um, Ryan Gosling was hilarious, though. Oh, there we go. All right, that's quite nice. Do I try it with something else or just keep going? I may end up using these for swaps for on the stage because I do need to make a few more. And one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Yes, so I've ended up making five in a row. So these could easily be cut up into five. Sorry, this is just, I'm trying to go as fast as I can, but not. it out the line see i can't even speak because <laughs> i'm coloring oh just a reminder i do have an altered canvas class tuesday the what's the date today today's the fourth the fifth of march so there are spaces on there if you'd like to have a go at that i know it might be outside some of you's comfort zones but if you have some spare canvas a heat tool embossing powders stencils or masks, some texture paste, scraps of paper, then uh, <clears throat> then do sign up for that. It's quite a fun, fun class. All right. Oh, I just thought there's a little tiny stamp. Oh, this one here. That's got like little, it's like little flowers dangling down. And what if I did that in... Knight of Navy. Oh, they're so pretty. And so I'm just kind of stamping and then second generation and moving down because I want them to look like they're hanging. Actually, I'm third generationing it. One, two, three. One, two, three. And I'm moving it like a couple of millimetres. It's like a sixteenth. I'm moving it 
down. I'll just do one at a time. There we go. One, two, three. Cute. How sweet is that? Just finished doing this. Right, I'm going to start saying goodbye to everybody. Thank you for watching, everyone. And I'm not going to make these into cards right now because I need to get ready to go. These, I will probably mount these onto, you know, uh, mat it onto like Knight of Navy or something and then put it onto a van very vanilla note card. I think that's probably what I'm going to do because I started mounting up a few weeks ago. I stamped, oops, I stamped these, do you remember? And I've just started putting them on the notelet size card uh, for swaps. So let me just double check the measurement of this. Oh, so if I just take off a little slither of that, I think I could probably get away with that. You know what? I'll do that now. That's how much time have I got left? Oh, no, I've got a bit of time. That's OK. Right. Um, and then ah, instead of mounting them or, ma or matting them, what I could do is just put Knight of Navy around the edges. So, th um, hmm, 29.7 divided by 5 is a bit of an odd number, I have to say. Um, 29.7 divided by 5 is 5.94. So it's just under 5.5, no, 5, no, nearly 6 centimetres, but not quite. So I'm going to cut these. Oh, I did end up adding, adding the pebbled path. Oh, well, never mind. It looks fine without it. So I'm going to put these at 5.9 centimetres here. And yes, some of them are going over onto the other side, but that's okay. If you don't, if you didn't like that, then maybe save the fungi stamping to the last minute if you wanted those completely centralized but i'm not too worried about that let's have a look i'll turn that around pop that in there so i'm going to do my really easy with knight of navy that's funny enough those ones were knight of navy those floral ones as well um just pop a little bit of ink like that all the way around and if I grab some very vanilla note cards you can see what that's going to look like I'm going to just let that dry for a second before I put it on there though because <clears throat> when you do this technique the edges do get rather saturated so you do have to just set them aside for a moment because Sometimes when I've even like I've gone to pick it up, the ink is not quite dry. So take your time with this. Set them aside before going to stick them on anywhere. Right, so I'm going to go back and pick up the first one, which I think should be dry by now. Yep, it is. So there you have, have it. A really gorgeous little scene, which you can then stamp whatever sentiment you want to have on there. How nice is that? Oh, I'm so pleased how those turned out. I love a beige and a navy combination. It's such a classic, calming, very giving off lots of nature vibes combination. so much fun and also it means that I've got 10 more swaps for Rotterdam which is fast approaching I can't believe that this time next week I'll be leaving the next day to go to London so I'm going to London and then then off to Rotterdam the following day uh, 
Haha, <laughs> that's just... <laughs> anyway, sorry, no, private joke. <laughs> I was just giggling to myself about something. Right, um, <laughs> sorry. All right, all done. I'll be uh, sticking those on uh, and, and making those swaps. And uh, there you go. I'll leave you with that. So let me know what you think of this technique. I'll go through all the stamps with you now and the colours. There we go. Right. So the kind of the main attraction, the main star of the show really is this beautiful kind of set of fungi from Inspirational Sketches. Then I use the background here from Quiet Reflection and then use the leaves, this little... I think it's meant to be a flower, lavendery type flower. And then also this little grassy type thing here and these little hanging things there. But I use them the other way around. So what did I use? That one, that one. One, two, three, four of those. And of course needed to have a little bit of dotage. So I'll use that one from Quiet Meadow. So if you've got other dotage, you can probably get away with not using that one. But uh, And if you have... There have been some other stamp sets that are very similar to this in the past few years. So just grab, if you have one of those, like Magical Meadow had a similar one. And, oh, I'm sure that, I'm sure there has been some others because I've used them in the past for that type of look. And yeah, it's really nice. It just gives that little bit of background before sort of applying your main, main thing. All right, then I use N Night of Navy, Misty Moonlight, Crumb Cake, and I've lost Pecan Pie. Where are you? Oh, there you are. So four colours, just four colours there, but lots of kind of colour variety. And then I did use the SU500 stamp and blend so this is part of the collection for kind of designed for skin tones but you can use it for for whatever it's a really nice color and it kind of matches the pecan pie really well so thank you so much for watching everybody please do share this video with anyone who you think might enjoy it and uh, go and get stamping hope to see you all again soon bye bye